kids, it's Uncle Wired down here, down in the mine shaft underground, and I got stories to tell you. Today I'm going to tell you one of the greatest stories of a prophet that is in the Bible, and it is the prophet Jonah. Jonah. Now, we all love Jonah because Jonah got a ride in the si in inside a fish. Can you imagine riding inside a fish? Oh, what a wonderful thing it would be down there in that slurpy, gurpy, gooey, sticky, smelly, slimy place of the belly of a whale. I don't know if it was a whale. It might have been a grouper. You know, groupers are really big fish, and they can actually come up and they can swallow a whole shark. Not a giant shark, but these kind of groupers, I mean, they're big, and they'll just come up with their mouth. And so, very likely, Jonah got swallowed by a grouper. Oh, it couldn't have been any worse for him. You see, he got into the trouble because God had asked him to go and preach to the people of a city called Nineveh. Now, Nineveh was a bad place. These, this was like the capital of the Assyrians. And those guys were mean. Actually, people that study this kind of stuff have found that on the walls of the guest rooms of the king's palace in Nineveh, they had pictures of people being poked with spears and their skin being pulled off because the Assyrians were very rough people, violent people. And God didn't like that violence. You know, some kids like to play violent games. They play violent video games. And maybe even they sit with their mom or their dad while their mom or dad are watching violent TV shows. Not good. Just turn that violence off because violence isn't for us. It's not for men for, for Christians. It's Satan's stuff. He likes to see people getting killed, even if it's made up, even if it's just the movies. He likes to see people uh, that are getting their their uh, bodies hurt because God made our bodies perfect. He, he loves, God loves our body the way it is. He doesn't need us cut up or shot in pieces. And so what Satan tries to do is he tries to get people fascinated with violence. So a lot of kids, they like to see dinosaurs tearing people up. <coughs> watch the shows about sharks tearing people up or cartoons about people shooting one another doesn't belong in the kingdom of Christ because Christ was patient he was kind you don't you think that if Christ had wanted to be violent he certainly could have tore people apart uh, when they were coming after him to put him on the cross but instead, when Peter took his sword and whacked off a guy's ear, what did Jesus do? He took that ear and put it up on the man's head and healed that man and then said to Peter, Peter, put the sword away. That's enough. And then he healed that man who had come for the very purpose of hurting Jesus. Well, some person might say, well, isn't God going to destroy everybody? You know, the reality is is that wickedness is going to destroy people. Evil destroys. And God is a lover of people. God wants to help us. And we need to have the same mindset as God. Well, that comes back to Jonah because Jonah didn't have the same mindset as God. God wanted to save Nineveh. God wanted to help rescue Nineveh. And he was telling Jonah, Jonah, the wickedness of these people has grown so great that that city is going to be destroyed. The wickedness is going to... They're going to kill themselves by, by uh, the fire that would uh, come upon them. Well, you need Jonah to go and tell these people that they need to repent. Repent of their sins. Jonah didn't like that idea at all. He didn't want to go to those violent, violent people. And so he came up with a plan. And his plan was he was going to run away. 
And so he just began to put together a little suitcase, he ran to the seaport, and there he found a ship. And that ship was going to go to the country of Spain, and so uh, to a, a city called Tarsus. And, and Jonah paid for a ticket, and he thought, oh boy, I've got a plan now. I'll get away from God. You can't get away from God because God knows everything. God's everywhere. And so Jonah was on that ship, and he was so happy with himself that he actually could fall asleep. And he fell asleep down in the bottom of the ship. There he was, snoring. <laughs> Meanwhile, up on top, the waves and the wind were rocking that boat. The sailors, they were just kind of fighting. They'd never seen a storm like this because God sent the storm. And the storm was pushing the ship this way and pushing the ship that way. The sail was rocking that boat back and forth. The waves were coming up over the tops of the, of the deck. And the sailors were you're going to die out here. They were terrified. This is like no other storm before. This is a storm sent by the God of heaven. Who could, oh man, who could, who could be the guilt of this thing? Who could have caused this? They went down to the bottom of the ocean. Jonah, Jonah, you got to get out of here. You're just a guest on this ship, but I think we're going to put you in this little boat here, this little lifeboat, and you can go to shore because you're going to lose your life. Jonah stopped them right there and he said, boys, he said, I am the cause of this storm. Actually, he probably didn't say it that calmly because the storm was wild and the wind was raging and the waves were crashing. And while the water was splashing up on his face, he said, man, I have probably caused this thing. Just throw me overboard. They said, no, no, Jonah, you're, you're our guest. You paid for a ticket. We're not going to throw you overboard. He said, just throw me overboard. You'll see. The sea will calm down. And so they did what he said. And they took him by his hands and his feet. And one, two, three, whoosh. And he went over. And you know the moment that he hit the sea, suddenly the storm grew calm. Jonah was so desperate, he thought he was going to kill himself. He would rather kill himself than go to the Ninevites. Because the Ninevites were violent. And he didn't want to get in the hands of those guys. No way. Nineveh, you know, is over in the middle of Iraq. And there's many people who don't even want to go to Iraq today because they think the people are too violent. But those people matter to God. God loves those people. And so there Jonah is down in the sea and he's just for a moment thinking to himself, I will die here in the sea. And then he felt the big gooey lips. Blah come over him and it was a big fish and it just came right around his head his shoulders his body over his belly down his legs and he went down into the middle of that fish wow what an experience there was probably other fish in there that were still alive and they're moving around and squirming and that fish is taking in water into his mouth and Jonah's gasping for air and all he's got down there is this gassy air of the belly of the fish. He can't even believe he's got seaweed wrapped around his head and the Bible tells us that while he was down in the middle of that fish, he began to pray. Prayer is the most wonderful thing that God has given us to be able to connect with heaven like a rope, like a thread that goes directly from your mind to the throne of God and that God hears our voice even when we don't speak. He hears us because God is has created our mind and that electrical impulse that he has put there is connected it's fired up by God and so he hears our prayers he hears our yearnings and our desires every time Jonah would open his mouth it'd be probably flooded with gooey fish so instead he just prayed in his mind oh God help me have mercy upon me down here I will praise you God and do you know God did exactly what Jonah asked. He heard his prayers and God sent that fish, but not quickly. Now you got to remember this. Jonah 
was in that belly of the fish three days. Three days. Now that's a long time. If you went into the belly of fish, you'd probably start praying immediately because you don't want to be down there for very long. Sometimes we pray and it seems like God doesn't hear our prayer. He doesn't answer our prayer immediately. And so then we give up praying. But we need to persevere. And remember that Jesus says, If you knock, if you ask, if you seek, I will hear you and I will answer your prayer. And God does answer prayers. He does miracles every day for different people who have prayed I hope you're praying and I hope you're asking for big things from God because He wants you to pray and He wants you to be faithful in your prayers. Well, as Jonah prayed three days and that suddenly he was blurted out bleh, right onto the beach. Maybe the fish couldn't get clear up to the beach and Jonah was kind of spit out right there about about 60 yards from the beach and he had to swim up onto the shore and there he is. He can hardly see because his eyes haven't looked around in the sun for days and his skin is maybe all white from the acids inside of the fish and he just lays there covered in seaweed. He can't believe it. The sun is beating down on him and he says, oh, praise the Lord, I have been saved. I will be obedient. I will go and do what God asks of me. Wow, that's important. Doing what God asks is the most important thing. Because when God asks something, he knows what he needs done. And so when God asks you to do something, through your mom or your dad, uh, you you obey, and obey quickly. Well, Jonah got up and he started to walk, and we don't know how he got to Nineveh. Maybe he rode a donkey, maybe he took a chariot, maybe he just rode on the back of a camel, but he got there pretty quickly because when he got there, he started to preach those people repentance, and he told them probably the story about how he had been in that fish because in Nineveh they had a really unusual custom and the custom there was for them to worship fish. Now that seems silly to us. Who's gonna bow down to a fish? But that's what they did. They had a fish god and so even today you see some people. There's one guy over there in Italy who wears a big hat that looks like a fish and that comes from the custom of the old people who used to worship fish gods that's right well those people when they heard this story that a man had been swallowed by a fish and then spit out and saved by the god of heaven who had created heavens and earth and that he was telling them that they needed to repent the news rippled up through the courts of Nineveh and came right to the ears of the king and he said to himself, I must repent. I must call my people to a new level of integrity that their moral standard would be higher and that all these violence, and maybe they had violent games like the Romans who used to send out the lions to eat people and the gladiators and people were so fascinated and filled the stadiums to shout and watch people kill one another. He said, no, no more of this. We will, we will turn to the God of heaven and so he took off his royal robes and he covered his head with ashes and he bowed down and he worshipped the God of heaven, the one that you and I know. Uh, and so it was that all Nineveh repented. Well, unusually, this did not set well with Jonah. Why would a guy who had just preached repentance to a whole city, and a big city it was, they say that Nineveh was three days' journey across to just to walk across that city, and the, he, he'd succeeded. People had repented. Repentance means that they were sorry for their sins. But Jonah was angry because he was prideful, and he was so prideful that he thought, to himself, I wanted to see that fire come down from heaven and burn those guys up. And now, how embarrassing. I've told everybody that fire was going to come down out of heaven and there's no fire. I want to see the fire. Jonah, can't you show some love? 
Jonah, couldn't you be kind to those people? Jonah went up on a hill. There was probably a big sand dune as there's sand everywhere out there in the middle of the middle of Iraq. And he sat up there and he watched and waited for the fire. No fire. Now you love fireworks, but there's something very different. You don't want to see fireworks that were going to destroy people. Sometimes people still send bombs around the world. Don't delight in that kind of thing. Don't delight in war and killing. It doesn't bring any joy to anyone. But Jonah wanted to see that. And he sat there on that hillside and he moped to himself. And God came to him and said, Jonah, why are you angry? Jonah said, I have every right to be angry. I knew that you were a merciful and compassionate and loving God. I knew that you wouldn't destroy them. And here I am preaching for you, telling people they're going to be destroyed, and they're calling me some kind of a liar. God shook his head. Jonah, have compassion on these people. Well, about that day, Jonah saw a little green bing, shoot come up out of the ground, and there it began to grow and grow, and Jonah... It's going to grow. It's a vine. Oh, wonderful. He thought maybe it's a melon or a cucumber vine. And it's just, he put a little stick there and the vine began to go around the stick. And he thought, oh, this is great. I won't have to sit in this hot sun for very long because soon that vine is going to come up over my head and the sun will beat down on the vine and my head will be shaded. Oh, he was happy about that because shade's cool and he, he liked to feel, feel some comfort there. And as he was watching that vine day after day, then God sent a worm. Now, if God can send a fish, God can send a worm. And God appointed that worm. You can imagine that worm receiving those instructions. Worm! <gasps> yes, God! I've got a job for you. You go and eat those roots. And that worm started to crawl, crawl, and God guided that worm right to where that plant was. You see, God had sent the whale for Jonah's rescue, and he sent the plant for Jonah's joy and comfort. And now he sent the worm for Jonah's learning. Jonah needed to learn something, and what he needed to learn was that he needed to feel love like God loves. Jonah needed to learn to love people. And in order to learn that lesson, he had to have a little bit of pain, a little bit of pain of sunburn. And so Jonah woke up and he saw all the leaves on that vine wilted and dead. Oh! couldn't believe it. His heart was crushed. He began to cry. He began to wonder, why did that vine die? He dug into the sand and he found the worm and he took that worm, you rotten scoundrel. And I think it was at that moment that God spoke to Jonah and said to Jonah, Jonah, how is it that you had pity on this plant? Actually, you didn't care about that plant. You cared about yourself, Jonah. You had pity on yourself. And you didn't have pity on those people of Nineveh, 120,000 people living there that don't even know their right hand from their left. They don't know what's right and wrong. And I wanted to save them. And instead, you wanted to save yourself from a sunburn. Jonah, you got to think like I think. Not only know that I'm merciful, but you got to love that I'm merciful. Show mercy to others. And you know what? I believe that God's lesson for Jonah with that worm succeeded because we have the book of Jonah. Now, no selfish person is going to write down stories about their own selfishness. They don't Selfish people don't like to talk about their selfishness. They like to deny their selfishness. Have you ever been selfish and you don't want to hear your mom say, hey, now share that cookie with your brother. But you know what? Jonah, I believe, because he wrote down his own story, overcame. He was a victor and 
he began to reflect on all these things in his old age and realized, you know what? I have been selfish. I don't want to be like that. I'm going to write my story down so that others could could learn from it and they could change their ways and they could learn to love the people in distant places and and in the cities that that are so violent and and so corrupt and and doing bad things and, and maybe some boy or girl in distant time would read my story and would go far away to a city that doesn't know about the God of heaven and would call them to repentance. And yes, Jonah took a pen and he began to write his story in hopes that some boy or girl, just like you, might go and tell others about the great God of heaven. Maybe you'll go somewhere someday. Maybe you'll go to Iraq or to Iran or Pakistan or India or out to Tajikistan or to Turkey and tell the good news of Jesus Christ and his love and his salvation to men and women around this world. God bless you, kids. Have a great day. Bye-bye.